Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. As you can see we are picking back up exactly where we stopped the last time. As a brief recap, with my updated strategy we were able to absolutely dominate World War II. We finished with an incredibly low casualties, 14,000 versus over 2 million from the Allies. And we puppeted most of Europe. When I say that we dominated World War II, what I meant is not just uh, defeating the Allies, uh, I mean that's, that's easy. But in addition to the Allies, as you can see here, we puppeted uh, most of Europe uh, and not only Europe. Now our army and our industry are absolutely insane and we are getting ready for Barbarossa. Before that though, I miss home. So we will briefly stop by in Italy to check how Benito is doing. Now this video will be edited, but I will also release the unedited version shortly after so that you can see each step in detail like in the previous guide. Keep in mind that uh, you can find the research and focus priorities in the description of the video and that you can access my exclusive spreadsheets by getting a tier 2 membership to the channel. Now one last thing before we start, if you are enjoying the content I make, please do not forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. It would really help the channel grow faster, which means I will be able to dedicate more time to it and make more content for you guys. Now that being said, let's start preparing for Italy and for the Soviet Union. So now the first thing we are going to do is we are going to pick the focus. Uh, in the previous video I said to pick a continuous focus. I actually meant to pick the, not the construction repair, but the air production I misclicked. In any case, uh, I changed my mind. I also updated the spreadsheet. And I think it's now better to pick uh, a war with the USSR immediately, even during the war. We're going to pick it now, slightly later, but it doesn't matter. Um, and then we're going to go for this one, which I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce. And then uh, the improved national spirit. Um, and uh, this one I think is pretty convenient for us because in the Soviet Union we'll, we'll want to build a lot of infrastructures and railways uh, to bring supplies to our armies. So we bring the infantry equipment production uh, to 25. The F2 production uh, to 75. C2 to 25 as well. T2, we keep it at 150, as it is already. And then we start producing uh, mechanized. Uh, we actually don't have it yet, so we'll need to wait for a few days before we get mechanized. As soon as we get mechanized, we start producing another 150 mechanized. Uh, I will make some adjustments to the dockyards. This is not entirely mandatory, but I suggest you increase uh, the amount of dockyards used for repairs, so that we repair our new uh, incredibly big fleet, as you can see here. And we're going to make some, uh, let me remove this fleet tab, because uh, I look like uh, I look like the UK when uh, they are playing the AI with 1 billion different armies without anything assigned to them. Uh, we're going to make some adjustments to our Panzer Division, because now we have plenty of tanks, so we can afford to make uh, this uh, change here. Increase the combat width uh, to 36, 35 is actually slightly better, but it's totally fine. We are going to increase our overall stats by adding two tank battalions, so we're very happy with this. We're going to make this change. And then we are going to start building uh, infrastructures uh, and uh, air airfields uh, at the border with the Soviet Union. Especially I want uh, uh, some air bases here. We will have plenty of planes, uh, so we just need uh, the airports to position them. And it may also be a good time to start upgrading the railways, especially in this northern part, uh, since we are going to go through here. Now we're going to prepare our armies uh, for Italy. Uh, our main army is still in the UK, just defeated the UK. We're going to send our tanks to Italy and we're going to prepare an offensive order. The idea is to split Italy into two, but I don't like this uh, arrow in this way. Yeah, let's go for something like this. Uh, of course, we're going to send uh, motorized uh, uh, with them, as usual. We'll also send a defensive army over. It's probably not needed, but just in case. And then I will send another defensive army to uh, Greece, because uh, Italy actually usually declares wars on, uh, war on Greece, so we need to be ready, just in case they are faster than us, or they eventually attack them. Then we're going to do... Uh, we're going to start some... Uh, uh, training. So first of all I want to deploy all of the planes that we have uh, stored. We still may have some. Let's make sure to assign all of them uh, to our main army. And then uh, we also have these transport planes. We're probably not going to need them in, uh, in Italy, but they will be quite convenient in the Soviet Union. But in case, I will just assign them to the northern part of Italy too. 
And then we had a spy in the UK. Now we're not done with the, collabor the third collaboration government in the Soviet Union yet. But with this last spy, I would suggest starting a spy network in the United States. Uh, probably in this area, because I'm thinking about going from uh, Canada this time. But we'll see. In any case, that will not be part of this episode. But we can start getting ready for it. Okay, we got our claim on Italy. We just need to wait for our army to get in position. Okay, we finished uh, researching mechanized, uh, meaning we are going to start producing them. So I will replace uh, this tank. Uh, and we're going to start producing as many mechanized as possible. going to use the political power to assign uh, some more medals because we don't really need uh, political power at this point. Okay, I would say we are ready for Italy, so let's uh, pay Benito our respects. Let's go. Now, the first push is in the mountains, but uh, I have the feeling that our tanks will not care too much about it. Mind that we don't even have air support at the moment because uh, our planes are probably slowly moving in position. Well, we have some, but not full. So Italy has a lot of divisions in here. <laughs> See, Italy declared war on uh, Greece, but we were ready for that. So it's not like Italy doesn't have divisions, but uh, we're just destroying them. Our casualties are at 1000, their uh, casualties are already at 190. I'm not even doing anything, just to show you how strong these tanks are. I'm not uh, micromanaging at all. I just gave the first order and then I'm just uh, looking at what is happening. And this uh, in practice means 2000 casualties versus 300,000. I must say they're doing a pretty good job with encirclements by themselves. Okay, let's give them some uh, time here to rearrange a little bit. We also need to give Italy some time to realize that they are fucked, so that they depose Mussolini. Okay, Mussolini is uh, deposed, so this war will be over very soon. That's unfortunate. This guy tends to get wounded a lot, uh, and that's weird because uh, he doesn't have the trait. Sometimes they have a trait that makes them more likely to be wounded. 89 days is quite a lot. Uh, I'm going to have to replace you, boy. Yeah, it's sad, but this guy will be there in 15 days. It's not ideal. The stats of the general are very important, so... 3,000 casualties versus 500,000. Not going to complain. Okay, and I believe this is the end of the war, because we already conquered most of Italy, unless they want us to go all the way to Palermo, so we will need to check. Okay. So, 4,000 casualties to take Italy. Nice. We're going to take their navy and we're going to puppet them. We need to do it uh, separately, unfortunately. There is no option to puppet uh, all of Italy. So, we're going to do it uh, in uh, this way. Okay. So, now all of Europe, uh, at least uh, Central Europe, uh, is uh, under our control. Well, Denmark is our puppet too, right? Okay, now we need to get ready for the Soviet Union. Let's see how long we have on the focus. Not that much, so the timing is uh, quite right. Of course, we are not forced to start a war on the Soviet Union as soon as this focus is completed. We can wait a little bit longer. Uh, but meanwhile, let's start preparing our armies. So, of course, we're going to make uh, the first uh, big push with our tanks. And uh, my idea here is to go for something like this. So... Hopefully, ideally, we will encircle some units in here, but then especially we'll uh, create uh, these uh, spearhead into the enemy uh, land. And then from here we can uh, try to create more encirclements. We want uh, motorized uh, to follow, of course, uh, and we already want uh, a defensive army to be there with them. And we're probably going to use uh, both uh, defensive armies and uh, both uh, regular armies uh, to follow on uh, our tanks. We just don't want to send too many divisions at once, uh, because otherwise we'll struggle with uh, supplies. Now I believe we can also start uh, unblocking these uh, naval regions, because uh, we shouldn't have issues with them anymore. And in this area we actually want the extra supplies uh, which our navy can bring. So we're going to have to set up the navy a little bit. For now we're going to stop training them and we're going to send them to this area. Then we will adjust them a little bit. Oh nice, we can take the last uh, doctrine. Perfect timing. So we have fully unlocked uh, doctrines for Barbarossa. 
Okay, we are ready for the war against the Soviet Union. We still don't have full infrastructures. We can wait a little bit uh, before we go for the for the war. The railways uh, should also help a lot. Uh, so let's wait at least until we are finished with these uh, buildings before we start the main offensive. Having supplies at the beginning is very important. So. Also, I mean, attacking the Soviet Union is November may not sound like the greatest idea. So we may want to wait a bit longer. Although, guys, this is a separate topic, completely unrelated, but uh, I don't know if you're following the, the war in Ukraine. I find it very interesting that uh, Russia always attacks uh, in, uh, in winter. And that's probably because the terrain gets actually better for tanks, for armored divisions, when uh, it's uh, frozen than when it is muddy in spring. So maybe attacking the Soviet Union in winter is not such a bad idea after all. That is, of course, uh, more in uh, real life than in the game. Uh, now, we're not going to build anything else for now, so we're going to waste uh, some uh, of our factories. Uh, but I want them to be free to build uh, infrastructures and railways immediately as we uh, start conquering land in the Soviet Union. Okay, our planes are ready. So, I will save, but I, say, I think we can start. Let's try pushing the Soviet Union in winter and see how it goes. Okay, let's go. Speed the down a little bit. I think they have some forts in here, so I think we can go for this one to make it a little bit easier at first. Not that we need it, it seems. This is a very, very good uh, first push. Big encirclement already. I will uh, stop the offensive at this point, I will manage it uh, manually, because I want to make sure that they take uh, only what I tell them to take. Now the question is, uh, will there be anyone in here? Let's find out. Casualties after the first push? <laughs> Not bad, right? 290 versus 115,000. Yeah. Not bad. Let's rearrange our tanks and uh, prepare them for the next push. Uh, now, when pushing uh, something like the Soviet Union, when you know you don't have the best supplies, uh, what I suggest doing is always pushing for a supply hub. You know, this is quite obvious. Most of you probably already know it, but it's a very good tactic. So next, we are going to go for these supply hubs in here. So I think it's okay to have one infantry army on the entire front. Uh, but then I also want the defensive armies uh, to be... Bit more split like one for this area and one for this area then we are going to use the secondary tank divisions uh, to push down here a bit later how are we doing in terms of uh, fighters they have quite a lot uh, and they are losing quite a lot so they will not have a lot for much longer i have the feeling of course uh, the reduced uh, supply consumption in the soviet union is very convenient so the more we have the better it is now look at this uh, and that's what I was talking about. By pushing just uh, up to the supply hubs, uh, but not more than that. Now, our divisions are supplied, uh, but as you can see, the Soviet divisions are struggling for supplies because the closest supply hub uh, to them is pretty far. And uh, we got uh, two of them close to each other. That's really a good strategy to manage supplies a bit better. 95% is pretty good, so I think we can uh, start uh, this second push. Let's go. Soviet Union doesn't seem to have uh, a large amount of divisions, for some reason. Probably they just positioned them poorly. Again, we got the two supply hubs, uh, so we need to make sure that they are connected. So, yeah, they're not connected with each other, but it's okay, they are connected to the other ones, so that's fine. <clears throat> now, with this army, we can start planning the next push, uh, which is going to be for Leningrad already. It's not the best offensive line, but it will work. Now the front is becoming a bit uh, larger, so I'm going to assign the secondary infantry to the southern part of the front. Ah, let's check the casualties. Uh, oh, 11,000. That's actually fairly high. I wonder how we got them. Maybe it's uh, from the Navy. Now one thing we want to keep an eye on is uh, the mechanized equipment. Because when we get to about 8,000... So we still need a little bit more. We can replace all of the motorized uh, with mechanized uh, in our army. Oh yeah, I can see uh, how we're losing men then. It's probably because of this. Uh, yeah, we're definitely getting casualties from this. Okay. 
So if we want to keep the casualties as low as they were, we probably should uh, forbid uh, these regions for the navies. Okay, I would say both armies are fine. Supplies are not great, but they are fine. So let's start uh, this offensive and let's start uh, this offensive. Double offensive. We go for Leningrad and Minsk. Now, the Soviet Union has a lot of divisions, but they are positioned uh, very poorly. Okay, we got uh, this push done well. It's not entirely finished yet, though. Okay, Leningrad is taken. Okay, we can stop this push. And uh, this one is almost done too, so we can stop this one too. Let's finish the encirclement. Very nice. We are very happy with, with uh, what is happening here. I'm sad we lost some uh, men to uh, transportation navies uh, in convoys. Because our casualties are probably going to be a bit higher than in the screenshot I shared a while ago. But I knew that would be hard to reproduce. Now we need to rearrange the armies a little bit. Uh, this is a tricky situation. Uh, now the next uh, hubs are not as close uh, as the previous ones. So at this point I think we are going for this encirclement here. So we go for Smolensk. With the main army. So let's position them for that. Something like this. We want the motorized to be with them. And what I want is uh, I want the defensive army to take care of this upper front here. Cover something like this. I also want this army to cover a bit better this southern front. Uh, unfortunately, it's uh, a bit heavy in terms of um, adjusting the armies constantly. It's quite a lot to do. But that's okay. If you manage your armies well, you don't need to micromanage your units while pushing, which in my opinion is uh, more annoying. This is a very easy one to get, so... Probably a wiser choice for now. Speaking of railways, damn the Soviet Union should, should thank me. I'm building more railways than they ever did. This land will be more developed than ever after I'm, I'm, I'm done with them. Uh, I had the feeling that I was missing something here. So there was a little bit there, which wasn't uh, fully taken. That's okay, because we're going to destroy these units very soon. Yeah, let's, uh, let's just go here. Get rid of these guys. Okay, by the way, we got uh, 8,000 mechanized. Uh, now, probably not during the push. That's not the best time to switch. But as soon as we're done with this push and encirclement, we are going to switch uh, motorized with mechanized. We can stop this push and uh, do it manually now. Okay, now that we're done with this push, uh, I'm very eager to replace our motorized uh, with uh, mechanized. So let's go on and do that. Uh, this will reduce our casualties even further. Oh, did we already get uh, the mechanized? It looks like we did. Uh, so let's check. Uh, yeah, we, we even have an abundance of mechanized, but it's better to have a bit more than, uh, than a bit less, of course. So at this point, we can reduce the production of mechanized uh, to something like 5 or 10. Uh, no, no, this is way too many. We don't really need them anymore for now. We'll uh, we'll keep upgrading them later. And we can just uh, build more tanks uh, so that they're all upgraded to the best level, the best possible tiers. So. I think we can go for this uh, push up here. Everything seems ready, so let's go. Of course, our stats are now even better. Yeah, we got the planning, so let's start the offensive down here as well. There is a place in which we are actually struggling to push. That's very interesting. It's going much uh, easier down here. Okay, down here it's time to end them. There's something very annoying about uh, encirclements you get uh, when you have um, friendly uh, um, states, countries or puppets. Next to it, uh, it messes up the front completely, as you can easily see here. To the point that it's usually better to micromanage these uh, armies uh, rather than just let them push. Okay, in the end, everything went well here too. Right. Stop decrypting my stuff, dude. Not going to help you anyway. 
Yeah, I'm going to stop this push. Now it's time to rearrange our tanks. Because we have another big encirclement here to, to close. We can push these ones too. But again, it will get uh, a little bit messy with the fronts. Ideally here, yeah, see? See what just happened? I completely messed up suddenly. So ideally, you really want to micromanage the divisions when getting these encirclements. But these are massive encirclements. So these are insane casualties for, uh, for the Soviet Union. This is where their army is ending. Let's uh, give it a look at 22,000 to 1.7 million. Million? It's not going to be as good as uh, in my screenshot, but it's going to be crazy good still. Something a bit different I want to try with uh, with Moscow, with the Moscow push. Okay, down here instead, uh, we're going for something very simple. Okay, now we can start our collaboration government in the States. Let's do it. We're a bit late, I don't know why. I think it got bugged, uh, or for some reason it wasn't building uh, the spy network. But that's uh, okay, it will be fine from now. And now that we have three spies uh, with the automatically repeat, they will actually do it, so we don't have to worry about it anymore, which is much better. Okay, we can definitely go for this southern push. This one is much easier. Also, it's no longer winter, and I can see the push going a lot better. Let's say we added some challenge to this uh, Barbarossa. I mean, doing Barbarossa in summer is easy, but do it in winter. Okay, let's uh, push with them too. Let's try this uh, broad front line push. Probably more casualties. Hey guys, I love your encirclements, but close them, please. Okay, I think this one we can uh, we can close right away. And uh, here we can probably push a little bit more. Let's go for. Uh, Dnipro Petrovsk. I like the fact that we are already getting to Moscow. Let's also get uh, Zaporizhia. Okay, now I don't particularly like the fact that there are no divisions here. Yeah, because they got completely messed up for some reason. So let's uh, try to fix this. Maybe too late, but we will try. It would be amazing if uh, Hoi 4 had a better system for self-management for divisions. This is honestly quite annoying, but... They do tend to me get messed up uh, a bit more frequently than you would like. And Moscow is down. We're going to get this area and then we're going to stop this push. Casualties wise, uh, 23,000. Okay, very satisfied. Now, this uh, is a bit of uh, a big encirclement, maybe a bit too big, to be honest, but uh, it's okay. We're going to get it. Oh, I hate Crimea because uh, it's kind of annoying to take it. It creates a new front. Ideally, you want to micromanage a bit better, but uh, I'm not going to do that. Uh, yeah, we're going to take this part uh, of uh, Ukraine. So we're going to try another broad frontline attack here. And that's perfect. While uh, up here, we are going to wait uh, for our divisions to be positioned a little bit better. But then we're going to close this encirclement because it's honestly too big. They still have a lot of divisions in here. And I think we can start uh, both offensives at once. So we can see a lot of green numbers in here. Looks good to me. I think I'm not going to change anything with what is happening. Got a big encirclement here. Oh, they are actually expanding from there. That's a bit annoying, but we can take care of that later. That's also annoying. Oh, this is very annoying though. Okay, this is something we don't really want. That's why it's better to pay attention to what is happening. It's because the fronts get messed up. Uh, that's uh, that's why this is happening. Okay, let's uh, stop these pushes and do it manually then. Oh, it ended up being another encirclement, so 
I'm not going to complain about it in the end. Okay, we'll need to get some people back in position now, but uh, it's okay. I'm really curious to know where these tanks are. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Your offensive line was there, so it really makes sense that you went 100,000 kilometers away. Okay, let's plan something with these upper ones. Uh, there isn't much to plan here because we are running out of places to conquer, but I think we can go for another broad push, uh, broad push for this area. Okay, now let's take care of these guys here. Technically, we could take Crimea at this point. A couple of tanks are more than enough for that. And these guys seem ready, so let's go. Okay, now all considered, uh, I think we can go for another push with this second army and we can probably go for Stalingrad. I mean, of course, the casualties we inflicted to the Soviet Union are absolutely insane. So at this point, yeah, they still have an army, but it's a fairly small army because we disintegrated them with encirclements. It's basically a formality at this point. They're also fairly close to falling down, probably with Stalingrad where we land, because we had the collaboration governments. We can, uh, we can actually keep pushing. I'm not even sure they have a decent army in here. Could be interesting to see if we can actually rush Stalingrad. These tanks are doing some very, very weird stuff. Like, too weird for my taste, actually. But but this may actually end the war. Yeah, it is. So the war is over, and actually I'm fairly happy because we were able to reproduce uh, the same stats uh, as in my screenshot. I think it was 24,000, now it's 25,000. Um, I can't remember exactly when we started the offensive against the Soviet Union, I believe it was November. It's, uh, what, nine months? It was seven, I believe, in my, in my test, but I started a bit later because I finished in uh, August. But again, guys, this is quite insane, you know, Barbarossa over with 25,000 casualties uh, is quite insane. Yeah, so that's it. Let's uh, officially end this war. And there we go. Now, this is a peace conference that I like because this is an easy one. We take their basically non-existent navy. By the way, keep in mind that most of the casualties were from uh, convoys raiding. I think we lost like 10,000 men in, in the Soviet Union. We're going to get uh, resource rights and war reparations uh, from the Soviet Union and then we're going to get the same from uh, Mongolia as well. So now Germany controls most of the world. What's happening here? Wait, is Yugoslavia not my puppet anymore? Oh, they are not my puppet anymore. I see, I see. So I guess uh, we will take care of Yugoslavia. This is why I, we balkanize them, by the way, because uh, they do some weird stuff and they stop being our puppets. We, we don't like that. That's all for this video, but I think I may continue this run and go for the United States. Now, we do need to, to make some plannings for the United States. I want to go from Canada this time. Well, I usually go from here with the naval invasion of Florida. From the Bahamas, I believe. Uh, this time I want to try from uh, Canada and uh, before we do that uh, we need to develop Canada a lot. So in the next episode we're going to prepare for that and then we're going to carry on uh, the invasion of the United States and see how it goes. Uh, well, a run with the, with the German Reich, with Nazi Germany, has to end uh, with an invasion of the United States. We need to see a fascist uh, United States at the end of this run which would also be a good introduction to the next uh, series of videos and guides that I'm going to make. I decided that the United States are going to be the next major country that I will cover with a country guide. We are not going to go for Japan uh, because Japan is very easy and very boring to invade, uh, so I'm going to skip Japan. But the United States may be fun. Now, this video will probably be released uh, more or less when the next DLC comes out uh, for Hearts of Iron. And uh, Brazil is going to be a big part of the next DLC. So I'm definitely going to play Brazil. Brazil is going to be the next uh, minor nation that I will play. I had a lot of fun with Turkey, but I don't have a lot of experience yet with minor nations. And so, yeah, Brazil will be the next one. United States for majors, Brazil for minors will be a lot of fun. Guys, keep following the channel. If you enjoyed this video, this guide, uh, please don't forget to like and uh, subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.